Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Here I am at the RBC Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, okay. Actually, I'm in front of a green screen here in New York City. But earlier this week, I was in North Carolina training the graphics team that produces all of the stuff shown on the jumbotrons and other screens during the NHL Carolina Hurricanes home games. Anyway, over the course of the training, one of the topics that we covered was finding a way to show sponsors and other people what their video might look like up on a jumbotron. I thought the end result looked so cool, I figured, hey, why don't I share this with the rest of the world? And so what follows is this tutorial on creating the jumbotron look. Okay, so here I am in After Effects, and this is actually me in After Effects, not me over a green screen of After Effects. I don't know if that means anything, but okay. And in the project panel, I'll grab my screen video and drop it onto the Create New Composition icon, which creates a composition the same size and length as my video. However, I'm going to make a quick change. I'll choose Composition, Composition Settings. And in the Comp Settings, I'll set the resolution to 320 by 240. Then I'll click OK to confirm the change. Also, in the timeline, I'll select my video and I'll hit S to reveal the scale property. Then I'll scale my video to 50%. Before I continue, I'll do a RAM preview so that you can see the video, and while it plays, I'll mention a few important things. I'm working at the 4 by 3 ratio because the Jumbotron that I'll be compositing on top of is at that aspect ratio, but the one you're using may be different. I've seen square ones and widescreen ones. You need to account for that when creating or choosing the footage that you'll composite on the screen. Now I've also scaled down the footage to half the original size because while my final composition will be in full resolution, the video on the Jumbotron screen will be much smaller. Some of the effects I'm using won't look that great when scaled down too much, so you want to plan ahead with that too. But don't get me wrong, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, we're going to be scaling it down even more when we composite it all together. But as long as it's close, you should be okay. All I'm saying is that when you do this, you just don't want to go from really big to really small. Anyway, the next thing that I'm going to do here is select my footage, and then I'll choose Effect, Simulation, CC Ball Action. This effect turns images into a grid of balls that can be scattered for a cool animation. On his new Creative Cow Master Series DVD, Motion Design with Adobe After Effects, Iran Stern offers a few nice tips for using this effect to bring together text. I'm not going to do anything so dramatic, though. I just want the grid of balls. So in the Effects panel, I'll set the ball size to 55. Let me be clear here. Your settings will probably be different. This is all based on the resolution at which you're working. These numbers work for me, but they may not work for you. So play around. Now, having spoken to the guys who work with Jumbotron technology, it's my understanding that it goes something like this. There are these five lions, and two form the, the legs and feet, uh, two more form the arms and hands, and then one becomes the body and head. Wait, that's, that's not Jumbotron, that's, that's Voltron. Okay, so, right, Jumbotron technology. It's my understanding that the screen works with a series of diodes arranged in a triangular pattern of red, green, and blue. By mixing various levels of lighting, the diodes combine to form all the colors of the rainbow. So, while from far away it looks mostly right, if you get up close, you'll see individual reds, greens, and blues sort of broken apart, similar to an older CRT computer screen or television. We're going to simulate that triangular pattern just enough to make it look like the colors aren't completely perfect. So, select our video and choose Effect, Channel, Shift Channels. In the Effects panel, set the property called Take Green From to Full Off, and then do the same thing for the property called Take Blue From. What this does is only show the red values for that video. Any colors that don't contain red in it become black. Any colors containing red or some amount of it are shown as degrees of red. Let's duplicate our footage by hitting Control D or Command D on a Mac and then in the effects panel set the take red from to full off and then set the take green from to green. Now this layer will show only colors containing green. Finally, let's duplicate this layer and then in the effects panel set the take green from to full off and the take blue from property to blue. 
So now we have a third layer showing only colors containing blue as varying degrees of blue. Now here's where some nice blending mode magic comes into play. Select all three layers in the timeline, and then in the modes column, set their blending mode from normal to the add blending mode. This makes the layers combine their colors, bringing back the original image in all of its beautiful, wonderful glory. Yeah. If you've ever wondered how you might be able to split an image up into its different color channels and then recombine them, now you know how you can do that. Speaking of which, let's break these apart a little. I'll select my second layer, and then using my arrow keys on my keyboard, I'll move it down two pixels, and then two pixels to the left. Then I'll select my bottom layer, and move that down two pixels as well, but this time I'll move it two pixels to the right. Now I've got the triangular pattern. And if I zoom in a little, you can see that the colors are slightly off at the edges. With that done, you may want to shift all three layers over a bit together so that the edges aren't black as they are here. A few final touches and we're almost done creating this. Let's add a black solid by choosing Layer, New, Solid. I'll call it BG for background and make sure that it's black. And then I'll also make sure that it's the same size as my composition. Then I'll click OK to confirm the creation of the new solid. In the timeline, I'll drag this solid to the bottom of the stack order so that it's behind our video. OK, I'm just going to jump over to our main composition for a moment to show you something. If you look here at the image of the Jumbotron, you'll notice that the screen has this rectangular pattern on it, all in slightly different shades depending on how the light hits it. I'd be lying to you if I said I understood the technical implications of that, but visually I'd like to recreate it. So, jumping back into my main composition, I'll choose Layer, New, Solid. I'll call it Boxes, or something like that. And the color doesn't matter, but we do want to make sure that it's the same size as our composition. Click OK to confirm the creation of the new solid. Next, I'll choose Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. I've covered this effect in a bunch of podcasts. It's probably the most powerful and robust effect that comes with After Effects, but in the interest of time, I won't cover it here. Watch those episodes for more information. In the Effects panel, set the property called Noise Type to Block. Then, set the complexity down to 1. Then, twirl down the Effects Transform options and uncheck Uniform Scaling. From here, it's just a matter of playing with the scale, width, and height property, as well as the offset turbulence property, to get a good size and placement of the boxes. It may take a few moments to figure out, but eventually you'll come up with something that works for you. Once you're done with that, in the timeline, set the layer's blending mode from normal to overlay, which mixes the colors of the boxes in with the footage behind it. Then hit T to reveal the layer's opacity property, and set its opacity down a bit. I'll set mine to 40%, and depending on your footage, you may go with more or less. Okay, we're done with the setup, so now let's do the composite. Jumping into my main composition, I'll go into the project panel, and I'll take my screen video composition, and I'll drop it into my main composition. Then with the screen video still selected, I'll choose Effect, Distort, Corner Pin. This effect allows me to take the corners of my footage and pin them into place somewhere on the screen. So, I'll quickly set the corners of my video to the corners of this Jumbotron. Now, my background image isn't perfectly in focus, so my video looks a bit too sharp comparatively. So with my screen video footage selected, I'll choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. And in the Effects panel, I'll quickly set the blurriness to 0.5 just a minor amount of blur. Now I'd like the screen to have a little more brightness, so I'll duplicate the layer, and in the timeline, I'll set the duplicates of blending mode to add. And then up in the effects panel, I'll set the blurriness up to 15. As you can see, this helps brighten things up a bunch. Also, to help sell the composite, I'd like to add an ambient glow from the screen onto the surrounding area. So I'll select the original footage, and again, I'll duplicate it. Then, I'll select the bottom of the three screen videos, and I'll choose Effect, Stylize, Glow. In the Effects panel, I'll set the Glow threshold to zero. And then back in the timeline, 
I'll set the layers transfer mode from normal to add. And there you go. A quick RAM preview, and you have it. Your Jumbotron look. I'd also suggest using some parenting and some wiggle expressions to simulate a handheld camera look, but that falls outside the scope of this tutorial. Of course, if your footage is actually shaky video, you can use After Effects' motion tracking and stabilization tools to lock the screen video into place. And if you're using video as your background, I'd also suggest maybe using an adjustment layer with the noise effect to give the whole thing some fake film grain. This might help your composite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to check out my new Creative Cow Master Series DVD, After Effects The Next Level Volume 2, CS3 Tips and Techniques. And you can find that at training.creativecow.net. That's pretty convenient that I had that, right? Oh, and uh, before I go, I just want to give a quick shout out to my new friends in North Carolina, Squatch, Chack, Dongle, Cool Button, Soats, and Kringle. Guys, I hate to break it to you. I, I looked it up in the dictionary, and I'm pretty sure that deuce is not a verb. Yeah. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.